That was called Phoenix. That's my settings right there, guys. If you look in my tank, I have it growing in the big colony. Either turn it off or only watch 50% of it. Now, how do you figure that? Hey guys, Water Change Wednesday. New viewers, Water Change Wednesday is question and answer day. I take questions from my comments section on my videos, and then I answer the questions there as well as here. Subscribers, I don't have to say anything about you guys. You know what it's all about. Let me let you in on a little secret, guys. I don't think you know. Maybe you don't. Maybe you do know this. I don't know. I think my videos aren't bad. How in the world are they only getting around a 50% view duration? That means 50% of the people who tune into my videos either turn it off or only watch 50% of it. Now, how do you figure that? I guess they're looking for something in particular. Maybe when they see this mug, they go, oh, the guy's too old or... Who knows? You know, 50%. Alex asks, what intensity do you run your light on your 20 gallon cube? I did a video on that, but I don't recall. It was a long time ago. I don't recall if I gave specific intensity. As of now, what I do is the AI Prime that's on there, I ramp up starting at 7 a.m and it ramps up to 11. At 11, I'm at full intensity, which is 60%. You know what? What am I doing here? Hold on, guys. Here I'm explaining this to you. This is my setting right here. I've been having trouble connecting with this AI Prime. I don't know what's going on with this. All right, guys, here's my settings. Let's see if I can get this so it'll work right for you. This AI Prime thing is bothering me a little. All right, there we go. Here's my settings. That's my settings right there, guys. AI Prime. Don't forget, I supplemental blue with the Kessel A80. And on that, I keep it, because there's two knobs, I keep it at 10 o'clock and two o'clock. I'm just looking over there to make sure I'm getting it right. That's the Kessel. That's my lighting. That's been my lighting for about six months, give or take, like I said, an hour here or there. If I were watching my videos, I would go, awesome. I'm wa yeah, I'd watch the whole thing, maybe watch it again. Themo asks, looks great, man. Also, what's the fish's name? I think Themo is referring to my clownfish. And I had told Themo in the comments that I stopped naming my fish a long time ago because we become too attached. You give a fish a name, you know, you're too connected with it. So if the thing dies, you're, you know, all upset about it. So I told him I stopped naming fish and I just call them he or she. This guy, my clownfish, I call him he. Sometimes I call him buddy. Sometimes I just don't know what to say, guys. Okay, next question. Albert asks, do you dose the water box? That's the water box 20. And how do you keep pH stable? That's a good question. I do dose, you subscribers and guys that have been with me for a long time, you can see it. I dose, this is the BRS dosing pumps. I have a video on that. Look at my playlist under equipment or parameters. It's in there somewhere. I use C-Balance, Albert. 
and pH. Honestly, I've never really had a problem with pH. When I first start setting up a tank, I'll check it. I use instant ocean sea salt. I change water weekly, a small percentage, 10, 20%, depending. I believe Albert said he was 7.9 or something when I asked him. I don't know what my numbers are, guys, but if my tank looks good, I don't care if it's six. Obviously, it wouldn't be looking good if it was that. Use your eyes and look at your tank daily. If you see something not looking well, then test. If you drop two in alkalinity or drop two in pH in a short amount of time, that's not very good. Aeration and air, oxygen, will help raise your pH. This chair sucks too. My old friend Miguel. Miguel was my first subscriber. That was back in late December of 2019. And Miguel asks, which coral would you say is the easiest SPS? The Pasolipora, Bird's Nest, or Stylophora? My experience with Pasolipora, guys, is the easiest. If you look in my tank, I have it growing in the big colony, and it's spread throughout the tank. It's actually not quite a nuisance, but I could go in and locate it in six different areas where it's starting to create new colonies that might be in the way soon, and I'll have to pick them off. And Stylo, I can't speak on that yet because I had it going really well. That's the one in the front in the 20 here. And that issue, I don't know whether it was RTN or what it was, but I had an issue with it, and I've never had an issue with Pasolipora. I'm not going to mention that again. It's just in my nature to complain a little bit. I don't know. I think it's a little bit of a habit I have, guys. I can, maybe I complain. Maybe I complain too much. I don't know. Lewis asks, what lamp is that? And he was referring to the lamp in the 220-gallon HOB that was called Phoenix. Thanks for the compliments on the new studio. Believe me, I, I appreciate all the comments you guys are making on great video. I know you guys are the ones that are watching it all the way through. These other, I don't know what these other people are doing. Fish Anonymous asks, do you ever consider an anemone in your reef tank? And I said, no. When you put an anemone in a reef tank this small, they tend to move around and they'll sting. The other issue is even if it doesn't move around, clowns get extremely aggressive in my experience once they begin to find the anemone and the anemone hosts the clown. They become protective, they start to grow larger and they get really aggressive towards the other fish. All right, guys, I think that's enough. What do you think? All right, I said I was gonna show you what the five gallon with the new refugium looked like in the evening. So here's a little shot of what it looks like at night. See you Sunday.